People always talk about human rights as a kind of sacred moral landmark in our civilization, but if human rights law doesn't protect Europe's women from invading third world rapists, and clearly it doesn't, then its priorities are fundamentally corrupt and it's not worth the paper it's written on. Admittedly, it's not completely useless, as more often than not, it does protect the invading third world rapists from justice, and I know that's important to some people. It's very important to the Council of Europe, which oversees the European Court of Human Rights, to flood Europe illegally with third world fighting age men, and we know this because recently a spokesman said that migrant men who are posing as children should not be tested to determine their age, as they might find it frightening and unsettling. Yeah, if only. Not nearly as frightening and unsettling as it'll be for the next child who'd be raped in Europe by a 14-year-old migrant with 30-year-old teeth who then can't be deported because he's got human rights. The only right that a foreign rapist should have in Europe is the right to step on a plane and be banished from Europe for life. If they knew that would happen, it might be an incentive for some of them to behave like civilised people and not like rutting animals. The original point of human rights was to prevent inhumane treatment, but it's been corrupted and stretched beyond all common sense to encompass areas where it has no business. The right to a family life? Yeah, right. What's next? The right to an emotional safe space with crayons and a cuddly toy? And if human rights are really so sacred, then what about our human rights here in Europe when it comes to freedom of speech, the most basic human right there is? Even though free speech is supposedly protected under both the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the European Convention on Human Rights, it's non-existent in Europe, where you can literally be arrested for expressing the wrong opinion. We're so very keen to give human rights to every illegal criminal scumbag who arrives here, but not to our own people in case they say something to embarrass the criminal politicians who are flooding Europe illegally with violent third world rapists. When a European arrest warrant gets you arrested and extradited to Romania or Greece, where you're thrown in prison in disgusting conditions for months on end without trial, there'll be no human rights for you. No, the human rights will be there for the Afghan or Somali or North African rapist who's in the country illegally in the first place and for the activist lawyer who's doing very nicely out of keeping him here and winning him financial compensation. If we send him back to his own country, he might have to pay for his crime and to a human rights judge, that's out of the question. So if Europe is to survive as a civilised continent, and right now that's in serious doubt, we need a change in the law to put a stop to this and to allow permanent deportation of foreign criminals, especially sex criminals, regardless of their human rights. But what if they get tortured in their home country? Well, in the unlikely event that that happens, it's their own fault, it's not ours. It's not our fault that we don't want these violent animals living among us. It's 100% their fault. They were welcomed at first, at least by some, but they've gone out of their way to earn our contempt through their disgusting behaviour. And given that the misogyny and rape are endemic in their pathetic excuse for a culture, we know that they're not going to change, and we know that the more of them we allow to stay here, the more dangerous Europe will be for women. We have no moral duty to protect violent rapists from the consequences of their own depravity. Our responsibility is to uphold human rights in our society by not using torture and other degrading treatment, and that is what we do. But not to deport a dangerous rapist because there's a risk that he might be tortured is subjective and speculative opinion that invites political bias. The result being that the most tenuous excuses are pounced on to tip justice, such as it is in Europe, in favour of the foreign criminal, the terrorist and the rapist at the expense of civilised people, especially female civilised people. How many times do we have to hear about some Somali or Afghan rapist who wasn't deported when he should have been and who went on to rape again. So yes, I support human rights in the way that I support animal rights, and I'm a very strong supporter of animal rights. I believe in humane treatment for all living creatures. However, I reserve the right to rid my house of any vermin that may infest it, and to hell with their rights. <laughs>
The human vermin who are terrorising Europe's women should not be entitled to any rights. And if the law says they are, then we need to elect people who will change the law so that all these men can be permanently deported back where they came from without exception, whatever age they claim to be, and without any regard for their phony baloney human rights. The right of women to live safely and freely should be absolutely guaranteed guaranteed above all rights for migrant rapists. And until we change the law to ensure that that is the case, the term human rights isn't worth respecting.